What's up everybody? My name is Tyler Clark and today I want to show you how to add a Google social connection to your Auth0 login. Head over to Auth0.com and sign into your account or create a new one if you don't have one already. After you've successfully signed in or created a new account, you're going to land on this page and this is the dashboard. On the left here, we're going to go to applications and then the big orange button, create an application. I'm going to call my Google auth connection example. And then the code that I'm going to be working with today is a react app. And I'm going to do the single page web app. Once that's done creating, you'll notice you land on the quick start tab of this. This kind of helps us figure out what technology we want to work with angular, JavaScript, react Vue. I'm going to be working with React, and so it's going to take us to a React login starter code app that we can use. This is what I'm going to be using for my app today. If you click the view on GitHub, all you have to do is clone the Auth0 React samples and then CD into the sample 01. Once you yarn install and get that up and running, it's going to look like this. A basic React sample project with a login button already built in. Once you've downloaded that code and you've opened it into your favorite editor of choice, mine is VS Code, inside the source folder, we just need to update some values in the auth underscore config.json file. These are gonna be auth0 specific to the application that we just created in the dashboard. We need to provide at a minimum the client ID and domain in order to get the authentication part working. Audience is used if we're gonna work with an API. So let's go back to our dashboard and grab these two and add it to our file here. This is going to be underneath the settings tab. You'll notice the domain and client ID here. So I'm going to copy these over. Perfect. Now there's only one other thing we need to do inside of our auth0 dashboard in order to get our app working correctly. So back inside of here on the settings tab still, if you scroll down, we're going to look for three different inputs, the allowed callback URL, allowed logout URL, and the allowed web origins. We're going to get this from the port and URL that our app is currently running on, which is just going to be localhost 3000. So I'm going to grab this value here and I'm going to paste them into these three boxes. Save those changes. And now we can rerun our server with the new values that we've given inside of VS Code and see where we're at. All right, now let's try this login button. And you see that we get the universal login where we enter our email and password only. There's not an option to do any kind of social connection like Google, which we're trying to do, or Twitter or GitHub or anything like that. Now, if you created a new tenant by default in the beginning of this video, you will see the Google connection here as it comes connected by default with test credentials. Though since they're just test credentials, you'll want to update those, which I'll walk through here in a minute. So I am able to log in with a user that I've previously set up within this tenant. If I click through here and give permission for this app to access my profile and email, I do successfully log in and you can see that my information is added to the app and I can view a little bit about myself from my authentication. Now again, the goal is to add Google authentication to that, that login flow. So in order to do that, we need to go back to our dashboard and add it to our tenant. So on the left here, you're going to see this authentication side with social Click on that and then what we need to do is create a new social connection. In our case, we're looking for Google. So that's gonna be just this Google first tile here on the left. As you can imagine, the Google social connection allows our users to log into our React app using their Google profile. By default, Auth0 automatically syncs the user's profile data with each user login. This will ensure that changes made in the connection source are automatically updated in Auth0. Now there's two parts of setting this up successfully. The first part is going to be in our Auth0 dashboard, creating the connection. And then the second part is going to be in our Google developer account. Now, if you don't have one, you can use your email if you have a Gmail to create a new account. Once you've created a Google developer account, we're going to create a new project. And then once we create a project, we're going to get some credentials that we need to go back to the Auth0 dashboard inside of the connection and add those credentials there. 
You can see that inside of my personal Google Developer account that's on the console here, I've got a bunch of projects that I've already made in the past. In order to create a new project, just click on the new project button and give it a good name. I'm gonna call mine the same name that I gave my application in Auth0, the Google Auth connection video, and create. Sometimes this takes a little bit to actually create and you'll get a notification in the right side. So once your project is done being created, go ahead and select that project. Now on the projects dashboard, we're gonna be looking in the credentials sidebar nav. On the left side here, click on credentials and notice that we don't have anything here for OAuth 2.0 client IDs. So we need to create them. I'm gonna click create credentials and do OAuth client ID. Step one is to configure our consent screen. Now looking at these types, you need to think about the app that you're working with. Are you working with internal or external? In our case, we're gonna be looking for external. As you can see here, external means available to any test user with a Google account. Your app will start in testing mode and will only be available to users you add to the list of test users. Once your app is ready to push to production, you may need to verify your app. And that's something we'll talk about in a different video. Now here, we need to put some information about our app. Next up is putting in some app information. So I'm gonna give this the same name I've done on the other ones. You put your user supported email in there, a app logo if you have it, the app's domain for the homepage, public privacy policy, and any terms of service. And then for authorized domains, we do need to put auth0.com as this is where the authentication takes place. And then also put your contact information here. Now I'm not adding any scopes to this project, so I'm going to save and continue. And I'm not gonna work with any test users right now. So save and continue. Check out the summary page, make sure everything looks right, and then back to the dashboard. With our consent screen created now, now let's go back and try to create those credentials. So again, go to credentials, OAuth client ID. Once it's done, we're gonna do application type, ours is a web application, give it a name, and then we need to add some authorized JavaScript origins and redirect URIs. So for ours, I'm going to add URI. I'm gonna go back to our dashboard and find that application again. So again, ours was just called the Google Auth Connection Example. I'm going to grab the domain, copy that, now back inside of here, I'm gonna go HTTPS and paste in that domain. Same thing for this redirect URIs, HTTPS slash slash the domain, but I'm also gonna add in a login slash callback and save that. Perfect, once that's done, it's gonna give us our client ID and client secret. Let's go ahead and copy that. And then inside of our social connection, notice that we have the client ID We'll paste that there and then grab the client secret and also add that here. Now, as you can see, there are a ton of permissions that you can work with with this Google social connection. Depending on your app and what information you like from the user, you can add any number of these. Just make sure that you scroll down the bottom and press create. Once you do that, you're gonna see that you get navigated to a screen where you can individually enable this connection for each application. Remember, I've been naming mine Google Auth Connection Example, so I'm gonna to toggle this on for that one. All right, let's see it in action. So head back over to your app, whatever you're running. Remember, mine's this React sample project. We're going to log in, and notice that now we have this or connect with Google option. So before, it was just the email and password. This is the user that I signed up, but let's go ahead and continue with Google. Notice the Google modal here where it's asking me for my Google email or phone. I'm gonna use a different user for this. So when I click next here, it's going to ask for my permission to access my profile and email, similar to what happened with the last user I used, tyler2 at gmail.com, where it asked the same information. After I click accept, we're gonna get redirected back to our app, but notice that I'm a different person now. And you can even notice inside the description that it's using Google to authenticate. So to recap, setting up Google Social Connection inside of your tenant and application is really quite simple, especially if you already have Auth0 running and working inside of your app and you just wanna add in that Google connection. 
Remember, all you need to do is go to your dashboard, create that new connection underneath the authentication tab, go to your Google developer account, create a new project, create a consent screen, credentials, grab those credentials and paste them back inside of that Google connection, and then make sure you enable it specifically for the application that you want to have this running on. And after that, click save and enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the video notes and links below for more information.